What makes the Lapham Patterson house so unique is in the details. It's not one thing, it's all the things put together. It is the most daring house in Thomasville and a challenge to all others in the state. It's unique in form and different and an architectural tour de force and a tribute to Victorian craftsmanship. I'm Cheryl Walters Watson and I'm the curator of the Lapham Patterson House. This museum is a building that is one of the most unusual ones you'll ever go through. It has some oddities in it that you won't find anywhere else in the world. It was built back in 1885 for a man named Charles Lapham. Lapham was from Chicago. He was a very wealthy shoe merchant. He owned three shoe stores and he was also a survivor of the great Chicago fire. And that has everything to do with this building. He suffered permanent lung damage from being trapped inside a burning building, and for the rest of his life, he had to go to where the winter climate was mild, and what better place than Thomasville, Georgia. Thomasville was well known as a pleasure resort for wealthy northerners who wanted to get away from the cold uh, Midwestern and Eastern winters, but Lapham was looking for a place to go to where his lungs would respond to the warm winter climate, and that's what brought him here. And when he came to Thomasville, he felt so good here, he decided to build a permanent winter home. And he built the Lapham Patterson House as a winter vacation cottage in 1885. The architectural style is Queen Anne, which was very popular in the 1880s. And the bright yellow exterior was also characteristic of a time when warm colors were favored for the outside of houses. Now, Lapham was wealthy, so he could afford all the conveniences that were available to the rich. So this house was the first uh, inside the city limits to have indoor plumbing, a central gas lighting system, and closets. But that's not all. The shape of the house attracted attention and its modernness was thought to be a good advertisement for Thomasville. So this house was well advertised as an architectural wonder of the 1880s, and so it is today. What makes the house so unusual is its architectural features, and that's why it's a museum. There are no right angles in this house, and nothing is centered or symmetrical. Everything is all off, and that was done deliberately, perhaps because of Lapham's preoccupation with his health. Some folks believe that if you build a house without right angles, since there aren't right angles in nature, it's a healthier house. What makes it a healthier house is the fact that uh, you have better airflow. Now, I think as a survivor of the Chicago fire, Lapham wanted to make sure that he and his family would be as safe as possible in the event there were a fire here, and house fire was quite common. So in this cottage of 19 rooms, there are 45 doors. 24 of those are exterior, and that means that in every room, first, second, or third floor, there is at least one door that leads directly outside. Now, there are 53 windows, and of the windows that open, they open from the bottom up and the top down, and from every single room in the house, you can step out through a window onto a porch or balcony and get out that way. But that's not all. Lapham also took the precaution of hanging a fire extinguisher in practically every room. And in some of the rooms of the Lapham Patterson house today, you can still see the fire extinguishers. The cottage is built entirely out of native Georgia heart pine. It is all the original woodwork and uh, all the original flooring. It's held up very well because heart pine is a wonderful uh, wood for building in this hot, humid climate. It's very durable and it's very hard. Lapham was an invalid, so this house was not geared toward entertaining. It was built quite simply for a man of Mr. Lapham's wealth and is not as opulent as some of the other winter homes here in Thomasville. The room we're in is the dining room, and it's the only room entirely paneled, ceilinged, and floored in the Georgia Heart Pine. And is also noteworthy because this is the only room in the whole cottage that is furnished with the original Lapham furniture. The dining room is six-sided, but if you look carefully around the room, you'll see that no two of the six sides are equal. The piece de resistance of this building is an architectural feature that exists nowhere else in the world and is right there at the top of the list as to why this building deserves to be a National Historic Landmark. 
You have a staircase with a cantilevered balcony that wraps around and winds through a freestanding fireplace with a double flue chimney. Now, it's the only staircase in the house, and that's very rare for a house of the 1880s. But what happens is when you go upstairs, you have to go behind the fireplace. And when you get up to the balcony, if you look at the floor, you'll see the steel rails that hold it up there. Then from the balcony, you can walk over the fireplace in between two chimney flues and continue on to the second floor. Now, the two chimney flues stay split through two fireplaces on the second floor. And then between the second and the third floor, the two flues come together to form the giant Queen Anne chimney that goes out the top of the house. But inside the single big chimney are still two separate flues. Very expensive fire precaution. The leading cause of house fire then and now is chimney fire. And in a double flue chimney, if one flue catches fire, the other one is your backup. So the smoke has somewhere to go instead of coming right back into the room. And so you can see why Lapham wanted to have a double flue chimney, although they were very rare and very expensive. What makes the whole thing unique is the fact the staircase with the cantilevered balcony wraps around and winds through the double flue chimney. The library was the more informal of the two parlors, and today we'd call this the family room or the den. The family liked to gather there in the evenings after dinner and play games and read, and many Informal family activities were held in the library or the sitting room, as the Patterson family called it. The ceiling in the library has a wonderful plaster medallion that we call our wedding cake ceiling. And you can see by looking at the pastel roses why we call it the wedding cake ceiling. Now, the library has no original furnishings uh, of the Laphams or the Pattersons, but their portraits are all on the mantel. Mr. Lapham, his wife and daughter, Mrs. Larman, the second owner of the house, and Mr. Patterson on the front porch with his two grandchildren on their christening day. Now, the formal parlor is the room that was reserved for special family occasions and, of course, for entertaining. This is the room that we now today, today call the living room, as opposed to the room where all the weddings and the funerals were held. Three Patterson daughters were married in front of the Queen Anne stained glass window. All of the stained glass windows in the cottage are original, but there have been a few replacement panes over the years. The parlor Queen Anne window is the largest of the three and does a wonderful rainbow show on fall and winter afternoons. As the sun travels across the sky, so do the stained glass patterns until by 3.30 in the afternoon, the window is perfectly reflected in the center of the floor. Now, the upright piano in the corner belonged to Alice Patterson, who was the last owner of the house. And we like to point this instrument out because not only uh, is it original to the house, but if you look at its more classic, simple line, you can easily see that by the turn of the century, the rebellion against the excessive ornamentation of the high Victorian period was in full swing. And overnight, these Victorian houses uh, became things to be torn down and and uh, to be shied away from because everybody wanted the more modern things. Now, the Lapham Patterson house, of course, is shaped like a very asymmetrical or crooked U. And the two wings that come off the main turret of the building are not additions. They are part of the original building. Now, the south wing was originally all the Lapham family bedrooms, the master bedroom, downstairs bathroom, and the children's nursery. The second floor was two guest bedrooms separated by a sitting room in the center. The first bedroom we call the ladies' bedroom, and the bed and the dresser in this room are also original Lapham pieces. Now, take a look into the closet. Closets were very unusual uh, in this time period, and these closets are most unusual uh, indeed. We call this one the slice of cheesecake closet. And the reason that you see the hooks in there is because clothes hangers hadn't been invented yet. On the second floor, the windows do something that they don't do on the first and the third. They are as rare as the double flue chimney. They are called slip head windows. 
And what makes them slip head is the fact that when you open the window, it slides up into the wall so you can get out to the porch or balcony quite easily because there are no doors to the porches or balconies on the front part of the house on the second floor. Now, the sitting room has a lot of oddities. The two bays are, of course, different from each other, and their window placement alone is worthy of comment. You can see where the window heights are not even the same. The wall down the center of the sitting room is necessary to hold up the billiard room above us, but side by side are two fireplaces serviced by the two separate flues of the chimney. When you stand in the center and look at the two chimneys, well, you can see that for yourself. This bedroom over the parlor, the only guest we know that definitely that stayed in this room was Mr. Lapham's father. And if you notice, most of the windows on the second floor are on the west side of the house. That's to allow the fall and winter afternoon sunshine to come through. In the late spring and summer, these rooms are very shady in the afternoon. Now, there's only one room on the third floor, but it is certainly worth the climb to get up there. The stairs are even steeper than going to the second floor. The third floor was the game room, or the gentleman's parlor, and in the center here was a large East Lake billiard table. Billiards was all the rage of the 1880s. You might say it was as popular as Nintendo. And the fact that this was a billiard room explains the platform there. It's called a gallery. And from there, you would climb up the steps and be elevated. And you could easily watch the billiards game without getting in the way of the players. But notice, from the gallery, there's an outside door that leads out to the third floor balcony underneath its fireman's hat roof. And from the wooden coal closet is another outside exit that leads to a platform on the roof with a large block and tackle in case you might be wondering how they got the pool table up those steps. Before I tell you about all the equipment in this modern 1885 kitchen, look at the ceiling and at the shape of this room. You can see the curving wall. And if you look at all the door and window frames, you'll see that they're all different heights. Sometimes I wonder what the servants must have thought as they were washing the dishes. What makes this kitchen so modern for 1885 is the fact that it was well equipped with hot as well as cold running water. The stove is much smaller than the original wood burning stove, but the sidearm water tank next to it is original. Now, the refrigerator there in the corner is one of two that were originally here. And this one was powered by a 50-pound block of ice and could be bought from this year's catalog for less than $6. The kitchen pantry, of course, was where all the food was kept. And because there were no wall-hung kitchen cabinets, all these houses had butler's pantries. Now, what makes our butler's pantry so much fun is the fact that the cup and saucer collection are all gentlemen's mustache cups. I hope you agree with us that the Lapham Patterson House is one of the most original and different buildings you'll ever go into. It's a monument to Victorian craftsmanship, uh, Victorian know-how, and also the desire of one man to build a house just the way he wanted it. Uh, nicknamed Mr. Lapham's Whimsy, it's one of those places you go through once and you want to come through back again to see what you missed the first time. <laughs>